Well, first of all, Michelle, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you being oh, here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Boss? Uh, <laughs> I'm not your boss, but anyways. <laughs> yes, you are. Um, so what does it mean to you to have All-Star Weekend here in Canada? What's, what's great about it is, to the extent we all believe and we're right, that the game is growing internationally. Um, it makes absolute sense that we demonstrate the fact that our game is becoming more international by having it outside of the United States. And, and Toronto, apart from being a great city, has a great team. So it will probably not be the last time we're in Toronto, even though it's cold. <laughs> um, but it's, it, it's, again, demonstrates that this game is, 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 is global and we should be having games outside of the States. No doubt, I agree. Are there any particular events that you are most excited for this weekend? I get a lot of business done during this week, so this weekend. So um, I, that's not something I'm excited about, but it's a nice opportunity to do that. What I find most exciting about All Star Weekend is it gives me an opportunity to actually have some face time with the players. You know, the games are fine and, and, and all, but to the extent I can sit down and have even a ten minute conversation with a player because he's here and he's got his family and he's relaxed, that for me is what makes it worthwhile. Um, and then again, there's some opportunity to conduct some business. No doubt. Are there, throughout the season, um, so far there's been a few interesting storylines, whether it's you know the Warriors and Steph Curry, or um, even, for example, surprises like the Raptors. Mm -hmm. like, not many people expect them to have such a good year. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on the NBA season so far, and are there any players that you're looking to watch in particular this weekend? I can't say that there's any particular player that I'm always, that, that I'm interested in watching because I'm not supposed to. That would be politically incorrect, right? Because I'm the executive director. I think though this weekend, apart from those guys who are all-stars for the first time, I mean, I enjoy watching <coughs> the player who for the first time is an all-star. There's a particular excitement about their, about their performance that that's pretty, pretty impressive. So I'll be watching Andre and, and watching Draymond. Um, but I think, in all fairness, I'll be watching Kobe because I, we don't know it's the last time we'll see him in all Star game, and that's you know, that's going to be both fun and sad. Um, I hope the guys make it special for him. I'm sure they will. Um, so I'll be focused like a laser on Kobe during the game. Should be fun to watch him play. Yeah, I think so. So this year was. Your first year, mm -hmm. well, this has been your first year as the head of the MVPA. Mm -hmm. um, give us your thoughts on how it's been so far. Uh, what if what are some of the challenges been? What's gone well? And um, you know, looking forward to the future with you know the new CBA and whatnot coming ahead. Yeah. What are some challenges you see? So when I started, um, the staff that I inherited was fairly skeletal, mm -hmm. and there were big things that I wanted to see the union be engaged in, and players had big things they wanted to see be done. So my first challenge was getting some staff to be able to deliver the services that we knew the players uh, deserved and, and desired. And that, that was a challenge which I think we, which I know we successfully, successfully met. Um, the other, the most significant thing though that we're still working on is regaining the players' trust. Um, the circumstances surrounding my predecessor's departure from the union let many players, understandably, of the view that they were not being properly served by the union and wondering if they ever would be. You know, wondering if there would be a management team that would understand that it's the interest of the players that's paramount. And so we've had to you know, rebuild trust. We're still, it's, it's a process. It's not something that happens overnight, but I think we're doing a pretty good job. We try to maintain as much contact with the players as possible. So there's a lot of traveling and a lot of uh, need to be where the players are, but that's frankly both, both the challenge and the joy because it allows us to have contact with the players. Obviously the CBA is very important and we're spending a tremendous amount of time with that, but keeping the players engaged in that process as well allows me to believe that we'll have a successful negotiation. I also agree, and I, as, as a new player in the NBA, um, unfortunately I wasn't able to attend the meeting, but I know for myself every time that we've been able to sit down with yourself and some of the other people mm -hmm. involved in the MVP, MVPA, I learn something new every time, and uh, I think it's definitely important for the young players to 
take interest in those type of things. And one of the things that you guys spoke to us about is the NBPA um, changing their headquarters in New York. So I was just wondering, what are your thoughts on that? And uh, what can the players look forward to uh, with that development? Well, you know, the, 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 the unfortunate reality is that the players owned a building worth about $18 million in Harlem um, that, again, belonged to the players. And even in the years since I've been here, uh, maybe six, seven players have ever bothered to come up there. Now, I'm not suggesting that <clears throat> there's anything that the players are doing wrong. And frankly, when you guys do come to New York, you, you do stay in Midtown. And traffic in New York, as any New Yorker or visitor to New Yorker knows, is ridiculous. And you don't have a lot of time to be in a car traveling for an hour, hour and a half to get back and forth to Harlem. And so it's just, it was just not convenient. So when we knew we had to move, the one thing that was also clear is we wanted the, the building to not only be convenient to players, but be, be a building that responded to player needs. So what, do you, what does a basketball player want to have access to? A uh, basketball court. Exactly. And you also need access to training facilities. You want workout equipment. You want a hot cup tub. You want a cold tub. You want some people on, 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 on staff, too. And if you don't bring your own trainer in, that can help you, you know, get, get some uh, treatments. So we built a player's hall, um, and the, the design has been all about what does the player want to see there. You want to conduct business in New York. There are facilities there for you to conduct business. So we've started out by, again, deciding what, figuring out and talking to players about what players wanted. And I think, I don't think, again, I know that what we'll demonstrate to the players is that we've built something that, that, that fulfills your needs and is indeed your house and you can use it year round. I think players are going to love it. Yeah, that's from our meetings that we've had so far, that was definitely one of the things I was most excited about, <coughs> especially in the summers, um, to have a place where you know everyone can kind of just come together. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of places where you can play against other NBA competition in the right. summer because everyone's kind of doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that was one of the best moves that you guys have made uh, thus far. Well, when you put players first, then it's easy. Then you know you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. You're not deciding where, where you want to have the office located, but what's most convenient to the players and what, what inside of that building is going to be what the players need and want to see happen. Putting the players first is always the right way to go. Well, I think we covered, uh, I think we covered enough. I appreciate your time. Thanks for stopping by. My pleasure, boss, and you are my boss. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.